All right, welcome everybody. It's good to have you. How many of you, God is just good? I love that song, God is good, and that's what we believe. It's a good day. Any day above ground is a good day, everybody. So be encouraged. You're in the right place today. want to welcome you. want to welcome our guests. As Ronnie said, it's our honor to be able to host you and to serve you. We're glad that you're here. And I want to give a quick shout out before I jump into today's message. I want to give a shout out to our, a part of our dream team, our outreach team that uh, did a spectacular job laying out our fall festival on Friday night. It was the best ever. And I just want to give a shout out. Come on, put your hands together. Together. They made it happen. Loving God and loving our community like that. I just love being in a community of believers who are all about loving God and loving people. And today we're going to start a three part series on a topic that could be uh, uncomfortable, probably for most it is. And for me as a pastor, it can be hard. Uh, but, but, but here's what I know. Uh, there's some things that may be uncomfortable and hard to talk about, but we need to talk about them. And so we're going to start a three-part series today called Money, Margin, and Mission. Money, Margin, and Mission. And, and so what I focus on, what I get excited about as I was praying for you uh, today and really all the last couple of days, I was just praying. I, I got excited because I realized there are going to be people here who are open and they're going to hear what God has to say to them and it's just going to bring a, a place of encouragement and healing and freedom for them because I really believe we need help in, in this area and I think that God has some things he wants to talk to us about so you know what, what I've learned when it comes to being a student and a learner is that many times when we get stuck in any area of life we're one instruction away from being unstuck. So knowledge gets us unstuck. That's why it's important for us to be a learner. And, and that's why education is important, but also, more importantly, why kingdom education is important. And so I just, I just want you to relax and just be open, and let's just go to God's word and, and, and see what he has to say to us. But let's just relax and receive, because God's not trying to get something from you, and neither am I, by the way. He's trying to get something to you, because he is good. And he is faithful. And as we just kind of approach the word of God today, I believe he's going to help us, encourage us. And somebody says, well, why do we got to talk about money? Well, the Bible says this, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And if we're going to overcome this area, like all areas, we only do it by faith. So I want to build up your faith today. I want to encourage your faith because God wants us to win in this area. He wants us to have victory. But I found that many times people don't have a right relationship with money. Sometimes the relationship with money is fear. There's a scarcity mindset or, or what's known as a poverty mindset, that there's lack and there's not enough. You got to kind of, you know, be, hold on to it and just, just be very, very, very closed hand and closed fisted. And, and sometimes there's materialism. Our relationship is, you know, we just want more money and it, there's consumer. So there's all kinds of relationships and God wants us to have a right relationship with money. I mean, maybe you've heard that, you know, the Bible says that money is evil. Well, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says the love of money is evil. So money is not evil or bad. It's immoral. And so the Bible says it's the love of money. Or maybe you've heard that, that humility equals poverty. And that's not true either. You know, I've met people who are, who are poor, who are very prideful, and they love money, even though they don't have any. But then I've met people who are, who are humble, they're generous, they're kind, they're godly, and they have lots of money. So that doesn't determine our pride, our humility. And so we want to kind of get free from some of those mentalities. And that's why we're going to look to God's word. And we're going to learn that God wants us to learn how to master money. But the truth is MasterCard has mastered most people. And God doesn't want us to be mastered by anything, including money. In fact, he's called us to be rulers in this life. He's called us to be sons and daughters so that we master money. Because we're not created to serve money, but we are created to serve God. And so we're going to learn how to serve God with our money. Because God wants us to be free. John 8, 36 says, who the son sets free is free indeed. And I believe that. And we receive that. He wants us free from sin, shame, our past he, he wants us free. But what about debt? What about materialism? What about some of these things that eat up a lot of believers? We're going to talk about that. And I think the reason we need to talk about it is because if we're honest, 
With all due respect, our parents probably didn't know how to teach us. Maybe they did. Some of of your parents may have. That's awesome. But most times, parents are just doing their best to pay the bills and provide, and and, and there's really no education. And then we certainly didn't get it in school. And and so we're kind of kicked out into life and like, get a job, figure it out. (laughs) It reminds me, uh, that's kind of how my dad taught me to swim. I don't know if your dad did that to you. He's like, oh, we don't need swimming lessons. What about the bubble? I don't know. You probably don't remember the bubble. But when I was a kid, we didn't have swimmies and swimsuits. I mean, kids walk out today, man. It looks like they could go into the ocean. And, and, and we had this thing called a bubble. It was a, it was a styrofoam bubble on your back, and it had two straps, and it hooked. <laughs> it's like, does that make sense? You'd kind of be floating face down. But, <laughs> hey, we didn't have seat belts either. But anyway, or car seats. <laughs> Thank God we made it. But my dad just kicked me out in the, you know, threw me in the deep end. He's like, he'll figure it out. <laughs> it's like swim or die. And thank goodness I figured it out. But that's not a good plan, everybody. There's a better way. And God shows us in his word how to get victory in this area so that we can learn to serve God with our money. And, and there's some, some, some stats we need to talk about. Uh, I think it's important that we understand the facts, right? Because that's important. Facts don't lie. But... I think it's the average college student today is graduating college with $49,000 of debt with student loans and credit cards. A lot of, a lot of college students today are having to file bankruptcy right out of college. How many of you know that's just not the way to start life? It's just not. 70% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. The average home has 10 credit cards with an average of $10,000 of credit card debt on them. And And honestly, we're the first generation to spend more than we save. 47% of Christians, if they had a, I'm sorry, of Americans, if they had a $400 emergency, they could not pay cash for it. And I'm just saying, everybody, let's get real. Let's get real. We have to be real about where we are if we want to move forward to where God wants us to be. You know, it's like the guy, you may be sitting there going, man, I don't need to hear about money. I got this thing figured. I got enough money to last me the rest of my life if I die next Thursday. <laughs> so how many of you have money? You have money? Yep. Four people. Wow. Man, I'm in the right topic today. How many of you wish you had more? Now, I'm not, that's not a trick. I'm not going to ask you for it. You're like, what's he going to do? <laughs> but see, we need, to, we need to realize that one of the ways that we could double our money is to fold it back up and put it in our pocket. In other words, let's stop buying things that we don't need with money that we don't have. Let's stop buying things to try to impress people that we don't know, might not even like, and we go broke trying to look rich. God wants us free, church. He wants us blessed. He wants us empowered to prosper. He wants us to live in this freedom where we're not crushed. I can't tell you how many marriages and families and relationships suffer because of this area. And I'm just telling you, God has solutions. God wants us to learn how to get free and live the life that he wants for us. Now, some of us need to do a little plastic surgery. We, we need to do this right here. We need to just get the scissors out, do a little plastic surgery, you know, because these things are eating us alive. And I'm not saying all credit cards are bad because that's, you'll, you'll, anyway. (laughs) But what I'm saying is, is that a lot of times that gets us into trouble. How do you stop? How do you, how do you get out of a hole? You stop digging. And so when we look to God's word, he teaches us, because see, the word has a lot to say about wealth and finances and success and business. And if we'll just be open to that and look to that, we'll see that there are ancient, proven, tested principles from God's word that help us to have success and to be able to win and to be blessed and to be a blessing. In fact, the word blessed means empowered to prosper. But let's be real. Most Christians are broke and we don't have to be. God wants us free. God teaches us how. And and again, my name is Michael. I'm your friend. I just want to help you. I really do. That's my heart. That's my desire. So I I want to just kind of take a moment here as we end towards this year and just to look at this area of money, margin, and mission. God first finances. And when we think about money problems, you know, I don't know how you were taught maybe you were taught great and you had awesome parents man that's incredible that's that I think that's what we all want to be 
but many times we don't know how. And so when I thought about my life, when I came to Christ, you know, I wasn't taught about finances and I had a job. I was 23, uh, but you know, I didn't understand finances and really I was, you know, rich on Friday, broke on Monday. I don't know if you ever lived there. And you know, I was so broke. I couldn't pay attention. Had slow credit, bad credit. Didn't understand that. I'm like, you mean I just have to sign right here and I can walk out with that stuff today? They're like, yep. I'm like, give it to me. (laughs) Because see, what we're taught is instant gratification. But when we submit to instant gratification many times, we give up long-term satisfaction. And what I'm saying is we got to learn how to give up instant gratification so we can have long-term satisfaction. we got to learn how to live different now so that we can live different later. Because, see, God wants you blessed, but his, his blessing is progressive. It's not instant. That's why you need to stop playing the lottery. Check the record. Most people that win the lottery are more broke five years after they won it. Why? They didn't know how to handle it. And God will never put more on you than you can bear, but he does want to bless us and empower us and prosper us. That's why he wants to do big things through us, but he starts by giving us little things. Is this good, everybody? I, I, I just I feel like the Lord is teaching us right now, so, and I feel like you're getting it, so... Let's, let's continue to grow. Let's just decide to grow. So here's what we're going to do. Um, we're offering a resource right now during this series, okay? Um, one of my new friends, Pastor David Crank, wrote this book uh, called Solving Your Money Problems, and it is really good. My wife and I have started it, and we're actually starting a Facebook page group. It's just you have to be invited, but if you'll go to the Turning Point Facebook page, you can join this group, and what we're going to do, there's just five chapters in here, everybody, so just calm down, 120 pages. <laughs> I don't like to read. Well, it's about 120 pages, so let's just be open to it. Let's, let's stretch a little. Here's why. Because what you tolerate, you'll never change. And so I've got to change some things. And so what we're going to do is my wife and I, we're going to maybe put some thoughts f- from the chapter, maybe some comments. We'll put some, some open, some comments for you and say, hey, here's what I'm getting. Anyway, we just thought it'd be a fun way to kind of bring some accountability so that we can all learn together. Now, uh, one of our legacy team leaders, when I was sharing my heart to help our church get free financially, I was telling him about this book. And he said, well, you know what? Uh, I- I'd like to buy some books. And I want to help our church. So he invested. This is a book that retails for $13. And today at the marketplace, if you'd like to get a copy, they're only $5. $5. That's less than, than wholesale. And so if you're on the Dream Team, you'll actually get one of these for free. Uh, as our gift to you for being so awesome and serving in the house faithfully. But anyway, so pick this up. If you want to do the Facebook page, uh, we'd love to be able to do that. But we're going to learn and grow together. Just a few weeks, let's do this together we're going to learn things like we need to operate in principle over feeling you know because principles with principles there's promises tied to it principles meaning God's word there are principles now attached to the principle is a promise and when I put the principle into the practice I get the promise but see a lot of times destructive end is attached to feelings I'll say it like this God's word works if we work the word And it will work for anybody and on anything. Are you with me? See, sometimes we think God should just meet my needs because I have a need. But see, God does not just meet needs because you have a need. God meets needs because of faith. If God just met needs, there would be no lack or anything in the whole world. But God does respond to faith. Are you guys tracking with me? And so he wants to meet all your needs according to his riches and glory. But it does require that we understand how to position ourselves for him to meet our needs. Because he'll take care of you, but, but you got to understand there are some things that we have to do. And when I do what I can do, then God does what only he can do. Amen. And so that's why we trust in God's word. Like, for instance, principle over feeling. You ever go to the mall and, you know, after you make it through the people with their little stands in the middle of the mall trying to sell you a lotion and a potion and a, a salt scrub and, you know, this hair do, do lily and this new toy, it's like... You know, it's just consumerism all around us, man. I mean, they got ads on the TV. They got ads in the bathroom. I mean, they got ads flying over in planes. It's like, bye, bye, bye. And so we've got to learn how to walk in a place of victory by understanding that we don't operate by feeling. You know, you're going through the mall and you see those jeans. And those jeans say, if you buy me, you're going to lose the weight. (laughs) You need to buy me and you're going to get that promotion. You know, dress for success. Or if you buy that dress, you're going to get a man. Come on. 
Or you go get the new Escalade and you get you a car tag for the front that says truly blessed, hashtag. Because <laughs> you are feeling it. Then after about six months of those payments coming in, and that blessing's done turned into a burden. See, we got to learn how to punch the money crunch in the throat. And know that Proverbs 10, says this, the blessing of the Lord makes a person rich and he adds no, say it everybody, sorrow with it. I want the blessing of God upon my life and the blessing of God upon my life makes me rich but it adds no sorrow. How many of you want to live there today? I know that that's where God wants us to be. Listen, not just for us, check it out, but for our children and our children's children. See, we don't want to just leave an inheritance of money we want to leave not just the fruit, as Pastor David says in the book. We don't want to just leave the fruit. We want to leave the root. Why? So that we, after we're gone to heaven, our kids know how to continue to prosper. And then our grandchildren are going to prosper. Not because we gave it to them, but because we taught them how to get it. Am I talking to anybody today? I just believe God wants to change some things. And I, I believe this, this word has the power to do that. So let's, let's think about this. How many of you get paid weekly? How many of you get paid twice a month? Good. How many of you get paid one, once a month? Okay, good. Thank you so much for your participation. I appreciate that. Again, that's not a trick to say, let's, time, let's pass the buckets. You know, I'm not doing that. I know you've probably been to the church where they pass two buckets, right? They take up the offering, they count it, they go, it wasn't enough, we're taking another one. No. We don't pass buckets, man. There's no manipulation, no obligation. Why? Because when you give, it's not because the church has a need. You give because you need blessing upon your life. Anyway, so when you get paid, I don't know if you knew this, but you know, we get paid once a month, twice a month, every week. You remember growing up in school? Did you ever walk into class and the teacher says, all right, everybody, put your books away and get ready for the test? And you say, test? <laughs> what test? Yeah. You ever said that? I didn't do real good in high school, everybody. So that happened to me a lot. <laughs> Had trouble paying attention. So, anyway, but God's helped me. So anyway, you know, every time we get paid, did you realize we take a test? And here's the test. Who will we thank first? What check will we write first? Who, I'll say it like this, who will we worship with the first? Who will we honor with the first? Why? Because whatever's first is honored. Okay? I want to show you this principle today. And it's a test. And when we look at Malachi chapter 3, there's a test. And God shows us the test. God wants us to pass the test. And the good news is, is God will never put a big fat F at the top of your page. He'll just keep giving you the test. And we're going to get this. Amen, everybody. Yes. And when you think about it, though, think about this. You see, the first has the power to redeem. The first, it's a kingdom principle. The first is a redemptive principle. In other words, it has the power to put back something where it belongs. That's what redeem means. It means to put it back. That's why the Bible says to redeem the time. Uh, Jesus is our great redeemer. He is the firstborn son of God. Why? Because the power is in the first. He redeemed us. We're redeemed by the blood of the lamb. It's the, fir it's the first has the redemptive power. And see, what we don't understand is, is if we're not giving God the first, we're not empowered to have the other 90 redeemed. So see, sometimes we give the first check to Bank of America, or we give the first check to Cadillac, or we give the first check to, you know, whatever, SunTrust, or First Bridge Financial, or whatever, and we're giving that first check to them, but here's the problem. Visa and Bank of America don't have the power to redeem the rest of the 90. Only God does. So think about that, because it is spiritual. It is not about the church trying to get 
your money. Hear me. That is a lie of the devil to keep you from receiving the anointing and the blessing of God upon your life. And then there have been guys who have lived that out, who have been impure, immoral, and have fallen financially. And that reinforced your story and what the enemy's told you is true. And I'm telling you, it's a lie from the pit of hell. Yeah, there have been people that have missed it, but it does not change the fact that when you honor God with the first, he redeems the rest of your 90. It's the word of God. And so... I don't mean to get so passionate, but I just really want you to feel that. I want you to understand that, man, because I really believe God wants you to get a hold of this. Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. He says, I am the Lord and I do not change. That is why you descendants of Jacob are not already destroyed. Ever since the day of your ancestors, you've scorned my decrees and failed to obey them. Watch this now. He says, return to me and I'll return to you. And you but you ask... How can we return when we've never gone away? And he says this, should people cheat God? The answer is no. Nobody would say, yeah, God, I'm going to cheat you. Obviously not. God knew we were going to say that. He said, yet you've cheated me. And you ask, what do you mean? When did we ever cheat you? And God says, you cheated me of the tithes and the offerings that are due me. See, he said, you've gone away from my ordinances. An ordinance is an ordinary way of doing things. In other words, in the kingdom of God, in God first living, God first finances, the ordinance, the ordinary way of doing things is to bring the first of our income to the Lord of heaven and earth. That's the ordinance. And God says, bring it to me, return it to me, and I'll return to you. See, God says, return the tithe and the offering, and I'll return the blessing to your life. So you bring it, I release it. Do y'all see this exchange? There's an exchange that happens. And I've noticed that sometimes, man, we can get really excited when God's doing all the giving. We're really excited about that. But I'm just telling you, God wants you to be more and more like him. That's why the Bible says God loved the world he gave. Why? Because the action of the Bible is giving. You want a better marriage? you got to give yourself as a servant to your spouse. You want to go to heaven? you got to give your heart to Jesus. If you want to receive, the Bible says give. Give and it shall be given. So we bring it, we bring it, and he releases. He says, I do not change. So he tells us straight up, but let's go to verse 9. He says, you're under a curse, for your whole nation has been cheating me. Now, see, God shows us where we miss it, and I love that about him. And and by the way, can we give God permission to point out where we're missing it? Why? Because we miss it sometimes. And we're saying, God, you can correct me, because I'm your son, I'm your daughter. So he he points out where we've missed it, and he corrects us and tells us where to get back. And so he says, bring all the tithe into the storehouse. Everybody say the storehouse. So there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, I will open up the windows of heaven. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough to take it in. Now, I like this because he says, try it, exclamation point. Put me to the test. And I like that because there's an exclamation point. Why? Because God is almost... He, he, he wants us to try this so that he can prove himself to us. Think about it, parents. This, this really hit me earlier. That you have, if you have children, you want nothing more than your children's dreams to come true. You want nothing more for them to flourish, to have abundance, and live an amazing life. Can you say amen? You know where you get that from? God. Jesus said, if you being sinful know how to give good gifts for your children, how much more does your heavenly father want to bless his kids? See, it's his pleasure to give us the kingdom. This is what God wants. That's why he says, listen, this is my ordinance. I can't violate it. I know that you're in need, and I want to meet your need, and I want to bless you, but I can't. Until you do, then I can. Because God will never contradict his word, but he will always honor his word. Why? Because he's a God of the word. So he says, bring it. Verse 11 says, they will call you blessed. They will call you blessed. And... I think God wants us to really be blessed, not so that we get a car tag or a shirt. Because I think when you're really blessed, man, people are going to see it. God God wants to bless you so well so that the world can see how good he treats his kids. He wants your family to be blessed. He wants your business to be blessed. He wants our church to be blessed. And it's his will that it be blessed, but it means we've got to bring. Now, let's... 
Let's think about this, this part where he says you are under a curse. Now, let me clear this up because I remember this teaching early on years ago, and it kind of confused me because, you know, Galatians 3 says that we've been redeemed from the curse of the law. Through Christ, we've received the blessing of Abraham. So here's what what I need to help you understand. In Christ, your Redeemer has redeemed you. You are forgiven. Your sins are washed away. You're a child of God. You're a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. And you are blessed. You are chosen. You are special. You're appointed. You're anointed. You're the righteousness of God, the apple of God's eye. However, when it comes to your finances, check this out. Because this world is under, the world economy is under a curse that happened in Genesis chapter 3 when God cursed the ground after the fall of man, the economy of the world is cursed. And so our finances are under that curse, but when we bring the tithe, the first is a redeemer. So when we bring the first, it redeems the 90, and that's how we reverse the curse off of our finances. Why? Because we are the CFOs of our life. Yeah, it belongs to God, but he's entrusted us. He says, I've given you the key, so hear me, son. Hear me, daughter. If you will bring it, I will release it. We'll break this thing, and you're going to prosper like you've always wanted to. That's what he wants for you. So Let's look at this. Three things real quick in your notes. Number one, tithing is a test. It's a test. That's why he said, test me. Test me. It's God's crazy math. I know it doesn't doesn't make sense, but I think God laughs at that. When we try to figure that out, he's like, yeah, you you, you can't figure it out. Aren't you glad that, that God's bigger than your brain? I want to serve a God who's bigger than my brain for sure. But he says if you bring the first tenth, the first tenth redeemed, the 90 will go further redeemed than 100 not redeemed. So we bring it. The number 10 is testing. Tenth is a tithe. Tithe and tenth are the same. Tenth means 10. And in the Bible, the number 10 is a number of testing. Let's, let's do a little Bible history. Let's see how many... You know, Sunday school students we have in the room. When God sent Moses into Egypt, how many plagues did he send on Egypt? Ten. Very good. When he came off the mountain, Moses, he had two rocks. How many commandments did he give? Ten. That's right. Um, Daniel, he said, test us for ten days. We're going to drink water and vegetables. We're not going to eat the king's food. There were ten, ten, uh, ten days of testing in the book of Revelation. So anyway, the number ten is, ten, is testing. That's why it's a tent. That's why he says, test me. And I love this. It's almost like God is saying, I've got a money back guarantee for you. You know those commercials. If you act today, (laughs) free shipping and a money back guarantee. That's almost like what God's saying. Like, just test me. And so at Turning Point, years ago, we stepped out in faith. I mean, it was faith. And we just said, you know what? We're going to put God's word to the test. Either it works or it doesn't. So we're going to put it out, and we still hold this true, and I'm putting it out today. It's called the 90-Day Tithe Challenge. And if you will honor God with the first, remember, it's not just 10%. It's the first. Why? Because the power is where? In the first. And if you'll do that for 90 days, if you don't see a blessing, if you don't see something change, if you don't see a difference, we'll return what you've given. And again, it's not braggadocious. We're just simply applying the word of God. And I know that's audacious. But I can't tell you how many people have taken that test and they saw God move in their life. It's amazing. So let's understand that. It's the first tenth. Now, remember he said a tithe and an offering. So once once we move from the tithe, we have something called an offering. And so uh, on the 12th of this month, we do something called the legacy offering. Now, the legacy offering is a special offering above and beyond. And what we do is we give above and beyond that and we give. And that's for things like campus expansion. Like the building you're in was built through the legacy offering. The seat you're in was built through the legacy offering. And so now we're looking at expanding Turning Point. We want to launch campuses in other places in the city. So this year, that's what we're devoting the offering to. But something that's really cool is we also take a, a tithe of what comes in And we dedicate it to a special project somewhere in the world. Last year, if you remember, we gave to the police department. We gave to the fire department. We gave to homeless students in Henry County. We gave $60,000, everybody, to those institutions. This year, I talked to my good friend. Yeah, give the Lord praise for that. That's incredible. Because, see, listen, from day one, day one, 
The first offering that came in, when we had about 20 people in a living room, the first offering, the first tenth, went right back out the door. Why? Because I knew if I honored the Lord with the first, with the first tenth, that his blessing would be upon our ministry, and I needed his blessing. And here we are, 14 and a half years later, still doing it. Now, we've been able to do much, much more over these years. We give locally, nationally, and internationally, and I'm going to show you some of those places during this series about where your, your money has been going, not just to the church, watch this, but through the church. So you may not know this, but your giving is helping girls as far as Cambodia in Europe who are being sex trafficked right now. Girls as young as seven, eight, and nine years old who are being brutally abused by men. You're helping ministries like She Rescue and A21 rescue these girls out of that situation, rehabilitate them, and help them to get healing. Your giving here is going all over the world to help for the glory of God. And I think that's awesome. So we bring that. So this year, what we're going to do is we're partnering with the Dream Center, LA Dream Center. I talked to Pastor Matthew and he said, we just found out there's a need that no one is meeting in our nation. And we're kind of going to be on the cutting edge. I realized that there are veteran homeless women. There are no places for. So we are going to reconstruct and renovate an area of the Dream Center with about 20 beds to start with for homeless uh, veteran women. And I said, we would love to partner with you. So this year, everybody, we're going to partner with the Dream Center to provide that. They're going to open it by Memorial Day, and it's about a $40,000 budget. And we're just going to say, man, we're going to get in on that. And whatever we can give, we're going to give because we believe that's important, everybody. We believe that we want to help meet that need. And that happens when God's people are blessed and they bring the tithe to the storehouse. So let's pass the test real quick. Number two, tithing is biblical. Tithing is biblical. Not only is it a test, it's biblical. It's throughout the entire Bible. And I'm going to fly through these scriptures for the sake of time. Genesis chapter 4, verse 4. All the way back to the beginning, Cain and Abel. The Bible says that Cain brought a portion of the fruits. He brought a portion. God did not receive it. He rejected Cain's offering. Abel, the Bible says, also brought a gift. Watch this. The best portions of everybody say it. The the what born? the firstborn and the Lord accepted it why because it was first it's first then we see Abraham who was the father of our faith he was the friend of God the righteousness of God he had faith to believe before the law the Bible says he gave a tenth to this guy named Melchizedek who was the high priest of the uh, he was the king of Salem which was really a shadow of Jerusalem he was really a type and shadow of Jesus Jesus is a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek forever. And I don't want to, you know, bog you down with all that. But (laughs) the point is, Abraham tithed, everybody. So the father of faith tithed. And how many of you know Abraham was blessed? He was. His grandson Jacob, we see a few years later down the road in Genesis 28. Look at what he says. He says, this memorial pillar I've set up in this place for worshiping God, by the way, that represents the church. And I will present to God a tenth of everything he gives me. So we see Jacob was tithing and he was blessed. Genesis, I'm sorry, Leviticus 27. Now this is under the law of Moses. Watch, I'm just going to give you one. There's many. And all the tithe of the land, whether the seed of the land or the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It's holy. Everybody say it's holy. See, holy doesn't mean perfect. It means set apart. And so the tithe, it's holy. And it's an ordinary thing. It's normal behavior in the kingdom of God, everybody. So let me ask you this. If Jesus said you should tithe, would you do it? If Jesus Christ said you should tithe, would you know in the New Testament, Matthew, Jesus says this in verse 23 of chapter 23. He says, you're careful to tithe even the tiniest income from your herb gardens, but you ignore the more more important aspects of the law of justice, mercy, and faith. Watch this now. You should tithe, yes, you should. But don't ignore the more weightier things. In other words, it's not just about tithing because you haven't been showing mercy and justice and love and faith. I need you to do those things, but you should tithe. So, so for me, if my Redeemer, who redeemed me from death, hell, and the grave, darkness and addiction, dysfunction, freed me, forgave me when I should have been judged, he gave me mercy, gives me a new start and a new life and a new hope and eternal life. If he says I should honor him with the first, you better believe I have no problem honoring my king and my redeemer with the first of everything that passes through my hands. Because see, it's all about honor. And whatever is first is honored. And I know that we want to honor. I remember when I took my first test when it came to the area of tithing. I was 23 
uh, was working in a warehouse logistic company and I was driving a forklift and and uh, was really hating it that I didn't listen in high school uh, because I was kind of limited in my opportunities. And so I didn't get a college education. I was out there working. And I remember uh, I, I was going to church and started uh, going to church. And I uh, heard about tithing. I heard the pastor would say tithing. I didn't know what that meant. He's like, tithe? What's he saying? Tithes? Tithes? What? what? I was like, oh, we just give whatever we want. You know, if I got a five or a one, oh, I don't have any money today. God, I'll get you next time. <laughs> it's just an offering. I didn't realize it was worship. I didn't realize it was an ordinance. And so I began to learn about tithes. So I started hearing it from the Bible and started learning it, studying it, reading about it. I said, oh, it's the, the tithe is the tenth. It's the first tenth. So I began to honor the Lord with the first tenth. And it was a step of faith, everybody. I didn't grow up in a pastor's home. <laughs> but I do know that we're supposed to honor the Lord in this area because I'd watched my mom. She was a giver. She was a single mom. I don't know how we made it. Now I do because she was a giver. And when she, she would give, man, I'm just telling you, that stuck with me. So single moms, listen, you, I'm telling you, if you'll honor God and trust God, watch what God can do, not only as you raise your child, but in the life of your child as an adult. I'm telling you, God will honor you and bless you, and he will blow your mind. I'm telling you, we've got to learn this principle. But I remember coming to the place as a man, trusting the Lord. And I brought the tithe, and I did it gladly. But I remember uh, being on the forklift, and an opportunity came. There was a job opening, and it was for management. And I was like, you know, I'd like to be in management. That sounds pretty good. Management pipeline, heating and air conditioning. I don't have to be this dirty anymore. I can actually use my mind. I think I'd like to do that. And guys would tell me, I put my name up there like, man, please, you've only been here a year. You got a college education? Pfft, don't you love people? You're trying to better yourself and they just want to womp, womp, womp. Just try to womp, womp, womp. I'm miserable. I want to make you miserable. And so I didn't listen to them. I put my name on the sheet and I remember just going, hey, you know, whatever. So I re remember now, I had backtracked, I had tithed and I didn't think about it. So I go in for the interview. I'm like, man, I got an interview. Wow, okay. I might be getting this. Wow. That's a phone dropping anointing. And it's a sign from the Lord. But <laughs> my time is up. But um, so I go in for the interview and uh, I didn't get the job. Okay. All right. And, and, and so the AM position, the PM position was filled. So I went on, just kept, you know, whatever. About a, about a week later, they called me in. They said, listen, um, we were thinking, uh, we, we would like to create a third position or a third opportunity shift. Would you be interested in working from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., kind of ch helping the shift transition? Now, it's, uh, you get to come out of the, the heat and the, air, the cool, the cold. Um, you can actually work, you know, clothes that you want to wear. Uh, you get paid more money and you get some other benefits. Would you like to do that? I said, well, you know, I need, I really, I need to really pray about that. Yes. <laughs> and I walked out of there and I remembered, oh my God, I've been tithing and the Lord has redeemed my opportunities, the blessing of God, the windows of heaven have opened up because I had the tithe and when I brought the tithe, God opened the door. And what I'm saying is we don't give for God to open up doors. It's not like, okay, God, I'm giving the tithe. Give me a promotion. No, no, because God can't be mocked. He can't be manipulated. Are y'all tracking with me? So I'm telling you, pass the test. It, it will unlock the windows of heaven. It is a test, but God wants us to pass the test. And he, and he says it's biblical. Number three, and then I'm done. Is it releases the blessing. It releases the blessing. See, God doesn't need my money, but I need his blessing. And the Bible said that when we bring that to the storehouse, what is the storehouse? Well, in the Old Testament, it was a temple and there were Levites and priests who conducted the furniture and the operations of the ministry inside and uh, they were, their needs were met that way. But then they ministered to the community of Israel. So God would bless the community in their fields and in their marketplace operations and businesses and then they would bring that tenth to the local church, to the, to the temple, the storehouse. And it's interesting because he said so that there's food, provision, in other words, there's provision for the vision. So now in the New Testament, the storehouse is not a temple, it's the local church. It's the place where you're fed. 
And see, when you give, it ensures that there is spiritual food in the house of God for those who are coming in who need to taste and see that the Lord is good. In other words, when you came to church today, aren't you glad that there was provision of a, an environment like this, that there was provision of the visuals and there was provision for the children's area, there was provision for the word of God? Aren't you glad that there was spiritual food when you decided to invest your Sunday morning? Aren't you glad that when you got here... Well, you know how that happens. is because God's people are bringing the tithe. That's how it happens. And so if you're a part of Turning Point, you need to understand this. Listen, if this is your church home, this is your tribe, your family of choice, this is where you bring your tithe, okay? You don't bring it just, you're not bringing it to a man, you're bringing it to the Lord. See, Jesus is a high priest forever, and when you give it here, he receives it there. Are you with me? And, and, and that's how you've got to see that thing. And so when you do, it allows us to be a blessing to you, your family, provide excellent ministry to you and your family to have margin. And then also we give 10% locally, nationally, and internationally. And so God wants the blessing upon our life. But see, here's the thing. The national average of Christians who tithe is 9%. And I look at the scope of what the church is doing in the world right now with only 9%. Number one, living under the blessing. Quite frankly, I think it's because we're strapped and we can't give like we want to. That's why I want to help us get free, get out of this place so we can be blessed and be what God's called us to be. And in, in our church now, the average is, is much higher than that. But I just, just dream with me for a minute. And again, if you call Turning Point home, if you're a guest here today, I'm, this isn't really, you know, I'm not saying you should bring that here. What I'm saying is if this is your house, this is where you're fed, this is where you bring it. And when you do, God opens up the windows of heaven over your life and he pours out the blessing. It's a key. It's a redeemer. See, it's, it's the redeemer, and you're the CFO of your life. But God says, trust me. So I thought I would end today with a powerful testimony from somebody else who's a single mom who's had an experience when God tested her and what he's done in her life. So can we take a minute? Let's watch this testimony. It's powerful. Hey, I'm Jennifer Carlisle. I'm the office manager and outreach coordinator here at Turning Point Church. Uh, I started coming to Turning Point about five years ago. About six months into being here at Turning Point, I decided, well, it's probably time to start getting on a team. <laughs> so I went through um, Growth Track at the time. It's now called Next Steps. And uh, got on a team, got on the catering team, and started serving. I was doing uh, serving with my time, serving with my talents. And God just hit me one day. He's like, so you're doing great with serving with your time and your talents. But he's like, you're not serving me with your treasure. And it's true. I struggled for the longest time with serving with my treasure. So I went to my team lead about that because I knew God was, he was pushing me to do that. And I was not comfortable with it because being a single mom, I had a single income. And when you look at the bills and you look at what you're bringing in, it's like, there's no way I can do that. <laughs> like 10% is a lot. I remember her saying, Jennifer, she's like, you know what the Bible says about tithing. It's, you know that it's a heart issue. You're having a trust issue with God. And you've got to surrender that to God. He's calling you to that. So she challenged me to get back into the Word and to see for myself what God does say about tithing. And so I did. And I just started trusting God. I gave it to Him. I was like, all right, God, you've called me to do this. I know if I'm struggling financially, you're going to take care of it. So I did. I, um, I started tithing full 10% and I did that for a little while before I backslid again. I was like, it was Christmas time and I was like, oh, don't think I can do this again. So I started holding back the money. God was saying, what are you doing? Like, you're not trusting me. Yes, I was able to get Christmas and I mean, God did provide even through that. But I just felt like the whole time I was cheating God. Um, and so a few months went by, I think it was springtime before. I went back to my team lead and I said again, I've been backsliding and I just, I don't know what to do from here. And she's like, you just got to surrender it all. You just have to go all in and give it to him. So I did. Um, I started tithing again and um, it wasn't long after that, I heard about a mission trip to Haiti that was coming up and my son really wanted to go. Um, I didn't really care to go overseas because I'm pretty comfortable here, <laughs> not in a third world country. 
but um, he really wanted to go, and I really felt like God was calling us to do that, so I was like, okay, well, let's go see how much it is. I uh, found out that it was $2,000 for two people to go, which, again, being a single mom is a lot of money. Um, but I was like, well, if it's meant for us to go, I'm just going to put those letters out there. I um, did sponsor letters, sent it to like, everybody I knew. Not only did we meet our $2,000 goal, but we exceeded it by $200. So we were able to pay for the trip um, and have the $200 for us to go there um, and help support the church there. Last year, when we were talking about opening the new building, Pastor Mike gave us that challenge to save a seat for somebody. And I was like, $500 sounds like a lot of money. I've seen God do the 2000 with Haiti. Um, and so I was like, I'll just give it a try. I'll, I'll try doing $100. So I did. I, I went and I, I was like, okay, well, I have my $100 now. And I was like, okay, I'll try for two because $100 was easy. So I was like, okay. And so after a couple weeks, so I had the $200. And I was like, all right, God, I'm just going to trust you. I believe that you want me to save a seat for somebody that's not here yet. Um, and I prayed over that seat, and I went ahead and gave the full $500. And I was just amazed that, one, I had that much money, and it didn't affect my bank account. It didn't affect my bills. Um, and I still had um, an overage in my account. So it didn't hurt me at all to pay that $500 as a single mom. And just how blessed I was um, just to see so many lives come to know Jesus since then has been amazing. Awesome. Isn't that beautiful? That's amazing. So we have money issues. We have problems. God wants us to know that he can solve it. We've got to trust him. It's putting him first. But the question is, is who will we think? Who will we worship? Who will we trust? And I'm convinced God will prove himself. If we'll trust him, he'll never let us down. He wants to show himself. He wants you to be blessed. So let, let's, let's think about that today. Wherever you're at in your journey, let God speak to you. But let's honor. Let's, let's take a step of faith together, together and let's see what God will do. I believe that you can do it through Christ. And he's going to honor you as you honor him. And I believe he's going to come through and do exactly what he said he would do. We're going to be blessed so that we can be a blessing for the glory of God. Not just for us, but for our children, our children's children, our church, our community, and our world. It's our purpose, everybody. So what do you say? Let's go all in today and let's believe that the best is yet to come. Would you bow your head? I want to pray for you. God, I thank you for the opportunity to share your word. Thank you for people being open to hearing your voice and your word, God. Just bind up anything that would cause people to distract or not trust you. But I just pray that you would speak to their spirit right now. That you would comfort them. Because some of them are really hurting right now in the area of finances. And I just pray for, for strength and courage and hope right now. That they would know that there is hope. And that you've got an amazing future. That's why you brought them here. And my prayer is that they'll trust you. That they'll lean into you. And see that you are good. That you are faithful. And with your head bowed, I want you to remember that Jesus Christ loves you. He, he was actually a tithe. He was the firstborn son. God loved the world so much, he gave his only son. He is our redeemer. He wants to redeem you from your sin. He wants to redeem you from the, the curse of sin. He wants to reverse that curse, turn it into a blessing. He has that power. But we've got to receive that and believe that and give our lives to receive it. So you give your life, you give your heart, you give your will, and you receive forgiveness. You receive a new heart. You receive freedom from your past and the promise of eternal salvation, eternal life. Man, what, a, what an amazing grace. And if you're here today, maybe you've never done that. Maybe you've never trusted him. Maybe you've never given him full surrender. I want to give you that opportunity in this moment before we leave today. Or maybe you're here today and you've called yourself a Christian, but you feel empty. You're not sure you're saved. You certainly don't know if you're fulfilling your purpose. And you're saying today, God, I want to know you. I want to serve you. I was made for more. I'm going to recommit my life and put you first. If that's you for either of those two areas, I'm not going to ask you to get up or come down from. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand on the count of three if you want to be included in this prayer. Are you ready? One, two, three. If that's you, just lift your hand. Thank you, God. Yeah, hands are going up. Thank you, God. Awesome. Yeah, I see you. Thank you, Lord. Awesome. Thank you, Father. Put your hands down. Now, if you lifted your hand, listen, it's so incredible. I'm so, so excited for you. 
And I know that God is ready to move as you look to him in faith. Would you say this from your heart to his? Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the son of God. I believe you died for my sins. And I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I surrender to you today. Complete control. I believe you rose from the dead. And I trust you with my life. I call you Lord. And I commit to loving and serving you all the days of my life. And I thank you that the best is yet to come because of you. Amen, amen, and amen.